Turns out Drill Dozer kinda sucks. I've been a big fan of Drill Dozer for years. Bought it in a release, played it dozens of times, became big boss and loved almost every second of it except for the police bot Mark II. I even bought extra copies of the game when it hit $10 sealed and gave it to friends as gifts. The only thing I hadn't done was play hard mode. In hard mode, the game is supposedly exactly the same except that the Dozer's life is reduced to one unit of health its health bar can't be expanded, and your main safeguard for progress is the game's continue system, which essentially turns the game's currency, chips, into your main resource. Most fans of Drill Dozer used to say that it's not really worth the effort, and I'm sure they'll still say that today. You don't really get anything from completing hard mode except for a sense of accomplishment, which is obviously subjective and depends on whether or not you think the game's well made to begin with. I thought Drill Dozer was great, and I'm not getting any younger, so I figured I'd take the plunge. I can at least say that most of the levels aren't affected too much by becoming no-hit practice runs. The platforming is generally still as good in hard mode as it is normally, because Drill Dozer didn't lean on spiked walls or jumps that were guaranteed to shave health off of you. And obviously, the drilling is the best part of Drill Dozer, and there's no problem there. The biggest problem hard mode introduces in most levels are the combat segments, where the skulkers or the police send wave after wave of enemies towards you, and it's because of something that I somehow never noticed before. The Drill Dozer's hurt boxes are huge. It's not just the fact that the backpack takes hits or that the base of the drill takes hits, no no no. There's a small radius beyond the front of the dozer that takes hits too. That's what turns the combat rooms into a headache. It's bearable but it causes problems in this situation and in other situations down the line. What swings the game straight into unbearable is the boss fights. The mini boss fights are fine, great even. They usually work on a set pattern, so even with the game's sloppy hit detection, they're basically puzzles with a very strict, clear condition. Proper boss fights do not work this way. They're a bit different. There's a lot of jank in the boss fights at the end of each level that I never took much notice of when I could afford to take a hit or 200. But when I've gone through 5 minutes of patterns just to get grazed by the outline of a boss's sprite and die because I took a split second too long to get out of the way and have to start the whole fight over again, the flow of the game becomes much less tolerable. The time sunken into these attempts, coupled with the way hits register, work together to force me into an existential crisis where I wonder if I've made the best use of my brief life. The worst of it came from this one boss and how its patterns became wretchedly randomized. Honorable mention to the second police boss fight though. That fight's obnoxious because it had me swapping my focal points of attention all over the place. Dealing with color coding for rotations that are the exact opposite of what I've used for everything before and after the fight. A timer that tells you whether the pitch from the police bot is a dud or an opportunity for damage. And a need to scramble from the right spacing for safe attacks to the right position to make sure the police bot sits on you just right. But that's not the worst one. The worst one is the colossal bot. Although none of the popular guides will tell you this, and I've seen no one make mention of this on the handful of hard mode playthroughs I've seen on YouTube, there's a segment of the second and third stages of the fight that are randomized. You're supposed to knock the robot's arm back when it swings down at you, but sometimes it draws its arm in for a feint, at different heights no less, and then punches at you from the right side of the screen. Sometimes it does it right away. Sometimes it does it after two, three, four, even five swings. And thanks to the labyrinths you have to go through after beating these phases, this could be after three minutes, seven minutes, or even nine minutes into an attempt for the pre antepenultimate boss. And this is assuming that you get the labyrinths right every time. And when you go back to the very start of the boss fight, you always have to sit through these unskippable comm calls from your pit crew back in the truck, which is just more wasted time. You can try to react to the arm, but you need a level of control over shifting gears to change directions that the game rarely ever asks you for, and if the arm makes contact with a part of the drill that hurts you, instead of the very tip of it, that's it. You're done. I don't even want to get into my attempts at dealing with the last two bosses, so I'll just say that the levels leading up to the penultimate and ultimate bosses are arguably harder than the actual bosses, and leave it at that. Like I said, these boss fights are too long to justify this level of stress. I really don't think they were made with the idea of playing them over and over again, and they're very sloppy. There have been lots of games that have difficulty modes that kill you in one hit, or effectively put you into unwinnable situations when you get hit once. I think it takes a lot of confidence in your work and the sturdiness of your level designs to make something like that. 
Unfortunately, I think Game Freak was too confident, and Hard Mode shines a light on a lot of the warts that I would have otherwise ignored for Drill Dozer. I realize that the best remedy for game modes like this is to get good, but I got good, and I realize that the game wasn't as good as I remembered. Even more unfortunately, I still think this is one of Game Freak's best games that isn't related to Pokemon, and far ahead of their output within the last 8 years. Even so, Drill Dozer's a fine game, I just don't think it's underrated anymore, more overrated, it's just rated.